Come on, let's do it. Alan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Board of Selectmen of Warham, July 2nd, number 25 meeting. First order of business um, would be a motion to appoint Alan Slavin uh, chairman pro tem. Second. No, no, you second. have to. It's automatic rule eight. No, you have to you appoint have to him pro temp. No, you don't. It's rule number eight. The chairman is automatically the clerk. The clerk is automatically the rule chairman. eight. Our rules? Do we have it? Do yeah. we have it in our own rules? Okay. I didn't see it. Yeah. So what do you want me to do? Change it? Okay. Just so we, we don't need it. Okay. Um, then the motion is to appoint Patrick uh, Tropiano, clerk pro temp. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Mrs. Whiteside, Mr. Tropiano, Mr. Holmes, and Mr. Slavin are all present this evening. Uh, the uh, town administrator is on vacation, and uh, town council is also present. Announcements, anything, Mrs. Whiteside? Yes, I have several. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I'd just like to mention that the, um, I'm going to get into trouble here, but the trash barrels that are on Main Street that were put there by the CETA grant, the tops of those actually are um, ashtrays. And it's obvious that not everybody knows they're ashtrays because there continue to be cigarette butts all up and down Main Street. Um, I would just ask that you use the top of the receptacle. You can actually, you know, kill your butt in there. Um, the library on Thursday and Friday, the 11th and the 12th of this month from 9 to 5, um, is having a book sale sponsored by the Friends of the Wareham Free Library. I would urge you to go. There's some really good deals usually. Um, it also shows support of our library. In the Boston Globe this morning, um, there was an article about the five diseases that you can get from Lyme ticks. Um, three of them are not very well known, but if you feel that you have flu-like symptoms, make sure that your doctor checks for all of them. Uh, I spent the better part of today working on the audit reports and I would ask that this board schedule one meeting per month that where town administrator would um, bring us up to date on any particular things that have had major improvements on them. Okay. Um, and the last thing I'd like to, you know, second to last thing, I'd like the board to um, join me in adopting a program of, I don't know, an award that we might call something like the power of one. There are lots of citizens in this town who do something just because they feel like doing it and it's something that benefits the town, it looks great or um, it benefits the town because they pick up the trash or whatever. And I think that from time to time we should award, I don't know, whatever to a citizen who has made an impact, not because somebody asked him or her to, but just because he or she felt like benefiting, benefiting the town in some way. And the last thing, um, very exciting announcement, is that the Wareham Board of Health was granted the Guardian Award by the Coalition for Buzzards Bay. The Guardian Award is the highest award that can be given by the Coalition and it was given to the Board of Health because of the uh, regulations that were recently adopted concerning nitrogen. 
um, it's a huge honor for the town and the Board of Health to have won that award. That's it. I have one, uh, Mr. Tropiano. I have one. It's kind of simple. I'm going to be on vacation from June 20th to June 27th, so I'll be missing the meeting that week. And I, I re I'm, I'm July. I'm sorry, July 20th. And what I really hate is that when we don't all of a sudden don't show up and nobody knows why. So I just want everybody to know that I will be on vacation that week and miss that meeting. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Um, yeah, I just want to remind folks that the uh, fireworks in Onset are uh, Saturday night, July 6th. Um, over the weekend, uh, we had an opportunity to take, uh, we had Devin with us, so we went and visited the new breakfast joint on Main Street, uh, which was outstanding. Um, they really do put a lot of butter. If you remember the night they were here, I asked about butter. And they really do put a lot of butter on the French toast and, and everything there. It's a great little restaurant, great service, a welcome addition to the town. Uh, a week ago Saturday, we had breakfast at um, Bay Point Country Club. Didn't know they were serving breakfast. Um, I haven't seen it advertised anywhere before, but they have breakfast on the weekends uh, from 6 to 10. Um, which is great. And so as we, I continue to throw these in under announcements only because we try to support, you know, local businesses whenever we can. I like to bring them up here uh, so that folks know what. Uh, we also had a dinner at the new, I, I got the name confused, on the P of the old Kenny Strauss. Stash. 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 There you go. Um, that was great. We sat outside in the evening. Um, it wasn't breezy, one of the only nights in onset that it's not breezy and the bugs are crazy, but the food was great, price was reasonable, um, and we enjoyed it. We had a good time. Good ice cream, too. And they had very good ice cream. Yeah, I wasn't going to throw that in, <laughs> but they did have great ice cream. So uh, kudos and welcome to those businesses, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. We have the Wareham Historical Society has their July 4th Antiques Fair. It is, starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, goes till 2 p.m. in the afternoon. This year they're adding, besides the fiddle contest, which runs between 11 and 1, they're also going to have Irish step dances. This will be at the Congregational Church at their hall next door to the actual church on Center Park. I'm going to make a note that the dog hearing article uh, that was passed at town meeting Selectman Teitelbaum has been working on that to make sure it gets through the House and Senate. And as of right now, it's been a favorable report by the Joint Committees and Municipalities Regional Government. It's had a second reading on June 13th. A third uh, reading was ordered, so there's a good chance this will go before the House and Senate for a vote shortly. Uh, the article on the sewer commissioners uh, basically left uh, town hall yesterday by certified mail. One. One set of paperwork went to Representative Gifford, one set to Senator Pacheco, uh, and Selectman Whiteside will be responsible for following through and keeping up to make sure this gets processed through so we don't have a similar issue we had it two years ago. We have, as I've mentioned before and everybody else has, we have a, quite a few committees, commissions, and boards that have openings. I'm going to do this very quickly. I've left a copy with several of the newspapers here so they can publish it if they'd be so kind. I'll leave this with the town also so we can put it up on the website to make it easier. But I'm going to go down the list and I'm just going to give a list of what's actual openings. Affordable housing has two openings. Beach and tourism, there, there are no members yet. That's the new committee that was formed. Bike path, two openings. Capital planning, one opening. Clean water committee, three openings. Community events is full. Community preservation, two openings. Conservation, two openings for associate members. Cultural Committee for Community Towns. Economic Advisory Council to CEDAR. Technically, there are four openings on that. That's the council that works with the CEDAR. Fields and grounds, there are no members right now. We're looking at possibly taking fields and grounds, open space, and mine it. This will be a discussion coming up later, combining all three since they all affect each other. Historic District has two openings. Historic Commission has three openings. Library Board is in very much in need of members. They have five openings right now. Marine Resources, another committee that has problems. They have four openings, three at large and one associate. They don't have enough for a quorum right now. Minor Forest has two openings. 
Old Colony Elderly Services has one op excuse me, one opening for an alternate. Open Space has one opening. Planning has one opening for an associate. Recycling has openings. Uh, the Road Commissioners have two openings. And Zoning has one opening for an associate. That's all I have. Did you skip the Council on Aging? Hmm? I think you skipped the Council on Aging. Uh, yep, I did. Two openings, sorry. That's it for announcements. Citizens' participation. Person on the fourth one back in the row there. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I respectfully request that you take item 8D out of order this evening, if possible. Deal with that early before it gets too late and you can move along with your meeting and the rest of us can go home. Uh, I made a comment earlier, which I'll explain again. We are not here to, going to discuss the actual determination of the description of the article here. What we are doing tonight is we've asked Mr. Charlie Riley, who is an engineer who has basically, and his father before him, done most of the road work in the town of Wareham, who has full knowledge of subdivisions and pre-subdivisions in the town of Wareham. So we're now trying to gather information to, as far as the private versus public roads and the whole situation. So the discussion tonight will be strictly information from Mr. Riley to give us a, a base to start with. This is going to take us four to six weeks working on this before we come up with some kind of determination. So even though you're all here, there will be no public discussion. I will try and get it out a little bit early if we can for you. We have a hearing and a few things we have to do first, sir. Mr. Walton. Good evening, uh, Dave Walton, District 3. Uh, very simple. I just merely have a suggestion. I know later on uh, this evening you're going to talking, uh, be speaking with Cedar as far as Merchant's Way is concerned. Uh, it's not Merchant's Way, but Cedar is uh, the people I assume would be responsible. I've noticed something since the, uh, the resurfacing down by the Narrows uh, between Hess and and uh, the Narrows Bridge. That being completed, and everybody has put their equipment away, but I think they're missing something that's uh, very important. Across the street from the bait shop is a fire hydrant. From about where that hydrant is, along that curb to where it turns and starts going up, what is that, War Avenue going up that way? There should be a white stripe on the road there, similar to what the state did going over the bridge. And if you go right up here on uh, Chapel Street, you'll notice when you come over the hill down to the, the new stop sign, both sides of the road, the state has put a line along the curb there. It helps to line up where the road is, because on a foggy evening coming through Wareham Center, heading towards the Narrows, the two, two yellow lines in the center turn, but without anything in front of you, someone's going to end up on that curb. And uh, that's not an anti-bump outs, uh, uh, you know, I have nothing against that. It's just that I think one simple right stripe will make it a lot safer. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Walton, if you could yeah, put that put in writing and curve. submit They've that line in. To, to the office and we'll get that to municipal maintenance to look yes, at. Usually Thank you. got our line over there so you can follow it. That is a good point. Uh, Mr. Clerk, do we have any bills or any documents? We have no bills or documents tonight. Okay, we have uh, several appointments. We'll go through very quickly. Library Board of Trustees, I believe we have one. Yes, we From do. From last week, we didn't have it on the agenda. Uh, Bethany Gay to a term to expire June 30, 2016 to the Library Board of Trustees. That's a reappointment. Do you want to make a motion on that? Second. Uh, I make I a motion that we appoint Bethany Gay to a ter uh, to the Library Board of Trustees to a term to expire June 30th, 2016. Second. Any discussion? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Unanimous. Old Colony Elderly Services. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> I would move that we appoint Pamela Dudley to the Old Colony all Colony Elderly Services Board of Directors for a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2014. Second. Second. Any discussion? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. 
that takes care of the appointments for today. Also, just as a reference, the old colony elderly services, Council on Aging needs to come up with an alternate member to go along with the delegate. Approval of minutes for June we, 18th. We have one set of minutes. Uh, the minutes are a uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen Sewer Commissioners from June 18, 2013. Move to accept. Second. I was a little late. So you second. I was a little late. You second. She seconded. No, she made the motion. I made she already the motion. seconded. I made the motion. And oh. Second. We look like nuts tonight. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We're in a hurry. Call for any the vote. Dis any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Alan has to sign that one. Next we have on license and permits, uh, Barnacle Bob's change of hours and DBA. Mr. Perry. Good evening. I'm Robert Perry. I'm accompanied by Timothy Cipone, who owns Barnacle Bob's and owns uh, the corporation, Barnacle Bob's Inc., that operates it. How you doing? He just finally got opened up, and of course he's closed uh, Monday and Tuesday because of the hours we originally requested. He'd like to expand those original hours, which seems to make some sense. We're looking to be open from uh, 11 a.m. until midnight, uh, Monday through Thursday, uh, Sunday through Thursday, and Friday and Saturday be open from uh, 11 a.m. to uh, 1 a.m. And additionally, we'd like to use two DBAs. We originally came before you with a DBA of Barnacle Bob's for the Corporation Barnacle Bob's, Inc. Uh, he's also looking at the idea of using BBs, the initials, with an apostrophe S. So that's what we're here for tonight with you. Can you? Mr. Chairman, I didn't think you could sell alcohol before noon on Sunday. Neither. No. Am I, I mistaken? No. I don't think so. Well, you may be, you may be right. That you can't, well, you can't have, an, well, you can't an have entertainment before noon because you have to pay extra money to the state. And I haven't checked the statute, but you may be right. And if you elected to give us those hours, we'd be satisfied. Maybe Mr. Bowen could answer that while he's here. Attorney Bowen. Jim. Yeah, Can you it's... serve alcohol before noon on a Sunday? I don't know. You can't open a package store, and I don't know on the, on the, the bar, but, uh, you know, whatever the board's pleasure is, we'll live with. That's not a major obstacle. Well, I don't think you can. Noon is fine. <coughs> Noon is Noon fine, is fine yes. one way or the other. Now we've got to change all this paperwork, you know. We can't sign it. We can okay it, though. We can okay it, but it's got to go back and get changed. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to go back to be changed. It's okay. an, yeah, it's an important point because is Mr. Bowen looking up the answer now? Yes, he is. Uh, yes, okay. While we're doing that, any other discussions? It's wrong anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's wrong anyway. So it says 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. That's a long time. I, another, may I? Go ahead. Um, sh uh, should the application read Barnacle Bobs, Inc., DBA Barnacle Bobs, and or... Barnacle Bob's Inc. DBA BBs, and it's probably a grammatical. Uh, I think it thing. might be. What, what have I got there? I, you I'm you not have sure it. The one I have in front of me, the same one you have. But yeah. Because Shirley, Shirley, correct me on that. I changed some language in the original to uh, satisfy Shirley. Well. Usually, you're much sharper than this. You know. Well, absolutely. I mean, she knows what's going on better than any of us. May I look at the? Yeah. have two certificates on file with the town clerk? Yes. One says Barnacle Bob's. And the other one says BB's. Right, but they both have Barnacle Bob's. Barnacle Inc. Bob's doing business, yes. Okay, so if, they, if you have two certificates with the clerk, then you have to have two names on this application, not 
not DBA and or. What? We have a common Vic in here. You know that? There's a common Vic in here. But it's not in the it's not on the agenda. Mrs. Whiteside, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you. Yes, Mrs. Whiteside, if you look at the certificate of liability, page three, if you see where the insured's name is there, second box down, it lists both names. Yeah, that's fine. See it? Bar insured Barnacle Bobs, Inc., doing business as Barnacle well, Bobs, and also doing bu in BB, see it? I see that. So I'm I don't think you can have or. I think you're right. It has to be and. Well, I, I think you actually have to have, if he has two certificates, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm trying to make sure that you get what you're looking for. I understand. Okay. Um, right. yeah. It has to match. You, right? Mr. Bowen, please. It's important to get this right. So when I don't know, I like to say I don't know but I can always find out. Um, the general rule is under Chapter 138 that you may not, if a pouring license may not have liquor sales between the hours of 1 a.m. and noon on a Sunday. There is a statute which the local licensing authority, in other words, the Board of Selectmen can accept that would authorize sales, uh, you know, 1 to 2 or 11 till noon on a Sunday. We would have to look, go through the records probably with Shirley to find out whether you've had uh, made that acceptance. But the general rule is exactly as you set it down. Yeah, I'm not familiar with anybody who sells in no. town. But if you're okay with Yeah, let's stick with the noon time. It makes that one easy, okay? It says I'm more concerned whatever language does. you feel should be reflected in the... I changed it to 12. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. I just changed it here. All right. I have a question okay, for Mr. So Bowen also. It. So it's 12, 12 p.m. on Sunday mm -hmm. to 12 a.m. We have pot potentially two certificates. Right. Can, can we do that? Two business certificates? Well, well he talking. says he has two on file with the clerk. I don't think he can do that. What have you got on file with the clerk? Two DBA certificates for one corporation. Two DBAs yes, two different DBAs. Is that an issue with a liquor license? Well, I'm not sure it's a problem having two different DBAs. I mean, it, in fact, it's more important that you know all your aliases. I mean, I, I, this isn't a detective show, I know, but that that's the actual you know legal term of art. No, you're it's right. it's important that all your aliases be on record so that there's never a question and I don't mean this with respect to this gentleman. Right. There's never an issue of fraud or anything like that. So I don't have a problem with uh, two DBA certificates. Uh, the important thing for purposes of the local licensing authority is that uh, the name under which the license is being conducted be very clear on the record and that the DBA or DBAs under which the business might be operated are also very clear from the record. And that's the ABCC is going to want to see that. That ties into things like the wholesaler list and all kinds of credit stuff that they administer at the state level. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to Mr. Bowen, didn't we just have this issue, at, I believe it was Wayham Crossing, and they came back and said that you needed to have as many corporations or whoever, anybody that could benefit from that license, we had to start, monetarily, we had to start making sure they were all added. Is that not correct? Yeah, uh, that's correct. And that's the other reason why we need to have all well, of these DBAs. Well, sure. And, and right. with, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'll be, I'll be very quick. Uh, the Liquor Control Act under which we operate came into effect right after Prohibition. The, the legislative purpose behind it and, and all, these all these identification requirements was to keep the people who had been in the liquor business during prohibition out of the liquor business once prohibition was over. And so the law goes to a lot of extremes to get you to identify every license holder, everybody who lends money, everybody who has a beneficial interest because, you know, frankly, they didn't want Al Capone running your local package store. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Mr. Clerk, we can 
take a motion with the corrections, right. but I have one other question for you. You said there's a common VIC license in yeah, the package? Yeah, there is, right here. It's a common VIC as well. Is he looking for a common VIC as well? It's not on the agenda, unfortunately. It's not on the agenda, so it's going to have to come back. Come back next week. If it was put in there and applied for, it was not put on the agenda. I, I don't have it. Well, I've got the... the I she can put the card in here. I don't know why. Maybe it looks to me like he's really only talking about the liquor license. Yeah. And so why do we have a comment? Yeah, I don't so have we'll a just Vic, I don't have a Vic the license in my I've pack. got the thing in here. So we'll just bypass. That's why I'm asking. Okay, I'm upset. You might have it, Patrick. All right, let's go. Yellow folder. Yeah, I don't know why it's in here, but it's it's here for us to sign. But we'll skip it. All right, I move, um, I move that we grant the change of hours to Barnacle Bob's Inc., DBA, Barnacle Bob's, and or BB's, 2424 Cranberry Highway. Manager Timothy Sifion? Sifoni. 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 Okay. Um, for the hours to be Sunday to Thursday, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., Friday and Saturday, 12 p.m. to 1 a.m., Closed on New Year's Day, Christmas and Thanksgiving. Closed serving stop, 1245. Glasses off at 1. Everybody out by 115. Second. For discussion? Yeah. Yes. It's Mr. Holmes. I still think you have to make it two different ones. No, you don't. The hours. Could you reread that, those hours? It didn't make sense. It's 12 p.m. Right. To, one, uh, to 12 a.m. Right. Okay. And then, and then Friday and Saturday, 12 a.m. I mean, 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. Right. And then you said glasses off by 1:15. He's not asking to be open till 2 a.m. Everybody's uh, well. It's it's apparently what's required. That's why they put it down here. But it says 12:45 a.m. Glasses off. Yeah. Okay. Then at 1 a.m. Everybody has to be out, and um, everybody has to be. No, I'm sorry. Glasses are on. I'm, let me redo this. Okay. Serving stops at 12:45. Then the glasses have to be off the bar by one, and everybody has to be out of there by 1:15. That's typical how it's done. So there's Agreed. no 2 a.m. closing. Said, Pat, but no, I there's no 2 a.m. So we have no 2 a.m. closings in this town. Do, are you, do you have a question about the motion, sir? I, I do. I'm sorry. I think second time Pat said it, you may have said it a little different than you did first. I'm not sure. I think you but did. I just appreciate clarification mm -hmm. so we get the right hours. That's it all. says, uh, I'll read it again. Thank you. Okay. Sunday to Thursday, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Friday and Saturday, 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Closing on New Year's Day. Mm -mm. What? 11 a.m. is what we've asked for on uh, during the week, Friday, you want the you want the 11 a.m. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, every day except Sunday. Except Sunday, yeah, we okay. said the 12 is fine, but the other days we'd like. All right, to so then it has to be completely redone. All right, so it's it's actually Monday through Thursday, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. Um, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. and Sundays. 12 p.m. to 12 to, to uh, 12 a.m. Okay, right. that sound right? Thank you, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Propiano. All right, no Tim, problem. Does that, Tim, does that work for you? It does. Yeah. Okay. You're the you're the owner. It does. As long as it Thank works. Okay. All right, but this is all going to have to be redone, and you're going to have to wait. We're going to have to send it back to the selectman's office and get it redone. Okay. Fair enough. Sure, that's Sorry fine. about okay, that. Okay. So the motion we was have made. a motion, and we have and a second. Yes. It was seconded. Second. Any other discussion? None heard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, folks. Good night now. Thanks. Good luck. Next is Buzz, Buzz's Bay Productions, Patrick. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, they have to be precise. Buzz's Bay. Get that out of the way, yep. please. You, re you ready? Yep. All right. Um, we have an application for four one-day wine and malt beverage licenses for Buzzards Bay Play Productions, Inc., 3065 Cranberry Highway, uh, East Wareham, Massachusetts. I'd like to, we need, this is a public hearing, right? Good evening. You're back again, Mr. Yeah. Marketing Director. Yeah, this requires a public hearing, right? I make a motion. Oh, these uh, are uh, temporaries. Yeah. No, we don't need them. That's right. one day. These are temporaries. We don't need them. Yeah, we haven't gone and done the rest of that yet. Yeah. 
I'm just following the boss. Okay, so what you're looking for <laughs> is July 13th, July 19th, August 3rd, August 10th. Correct. Right? Uh, from 7 p.m. to midnight. Correct. Okay. Any discussion from the board? Yeah, you May I have a qu just a question? Yep. May I? Sure. Um, this is the same kind of thing that you've been before us. Right. It's a comedy okay. show. It's yep. going to be a burlesque show. Ah. There you go. <laughs> okay. Are you starring in it, Patrick? <laughs> Are you kidding? You want to scare everybody? I'll move to approve. Need a second? Yeah. Okay, I'll read it. Read the, if you're read ready. The, Everybody's read done? Read the detail. Okay, here we go. I move that we authorize Buzzards Bay Play Productions, Inc. Um, for one day alcoholic, um, let's see, wine and malt beverage licenses for July the 13th, July the 19th, 2013, August the 3rd and August the 10th for 2013 from 7 p.m. to 12 midnight to be held at 3065 Cranberry Highway in East Wareham, Massachusetts. Second. Any discussion? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous? How's Thank it going? Like this crowd's, year, man, crowd's this, picking up. Yes. This is what we're hoping for. I'm hoping this year is makes, makes its turnaround. Yeah. You know, yeah. I know it's called a nonprofit, but it has been for the last two years. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Nonprofit is, doesn't mean you don't need to make money. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good busy. luck. Good luck tonight. Take care. Anything we can do to help you get the word out, please let us know. Thank you. You need to sign here. Oh, All right. So We're going to go out of order to help the people that are here. Also, uh, we have a town employee who is here to speak on a different subject, so if he will put up with me, Mr. Sharma, we'll wait until we're going to do the other piece, people first. I appreciate you waiting. Charlie? I asked Mr. Rowley to come before us because we have obviously uh, have an issue with, uh, that's come up with paved roads, public roads, private ways. Etc. And we basically found that we didn't, we have not actually adopted a particular statute that allows the use of public funds. And we basically are going to try and go back to square one, figure out where we started, how we got to where we are today, and then the next portion will be how we go forward down the line. I expect, as I said before, this is going to take about a four to six week project to figure this all up, so we know where we're going to be. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know some of you. <laughs> from before. Certainly the older ones, right? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know exactly where you want me to begin, but um, uh, let me say that with respect to the uh, street Mr. taking Chairman, progress. If we uh, could. All right. I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what this is either. Maybe you could just give us some back. Is Mr. Raleigh um, uh, under engagement by the town? No, I asked uh, Mr. What, what is the background? And M why is he Mr. Ali was has basically and family before then did most of the road layouts for the town of Wareham over a long period of time. Okay. Uh, and he's recently retired, I think partially anyways. And I asked Mr. Ali if he would help us out with this because there's a lot of background information and a lot of information that we could go in different directions. So I'm trying to make sure that we have all the information we need to make the right decisions as we go down the line. When, when you say a four to six week project. We're going to. Every week we're going to have to be discussing this to come up with some solution down Mr. the line. Mr. Sullivan is, is, is the town administrator. Yes. So what project are we working on? That's, that's what I want to know. There's going to have to be a decision made what we do about the roads themselves down the line. You're talking about getting the roads accepted, the process yes, to do that? Yes, the exceptions You're of the roads. You're not talking about the decision to follow the law? No. Okay. That's what we have to do right, no so matter I'm what. I'm trying to be clear on what, oh, no. on what this project is. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Sullivan's already made a decision. Yeah. We have three and different. And now we're looking at a process by which maybe we can bring to yes. the process forward to try to accept streets. Is we that have, what we're doing? We have three different pieces. One is, the, one is the town administrator's piece, one is town council, and one is ours. Okay. Thank you actually, very much. Thank you. The planning board also gets involved. Perhaps I can begin with uh, just giving a little bit of background of who I am for the benefit of Mr. Holmes, since I know the rest of your, your board a little bit better. 
Uh, Mr. Holmes, I am a reg <laughs> okay. Uh, I am a registered professional engineer. I'm also a registered land surveyor with the Commonwealth. Uh, I had a business uh, in the town for 32 or 33 years. Prior to that, uh, I worked with my father's office, who did much the same sort of work. Uh, he was the town engineer for 40 years. Uh, I picked up after him and was actually the town engineer for 10 years from 1990 to 2000. Uh, during the course of uh, my experience, my professional experience in working in town, um, I submitted uh, and provided expertise to um, a whole host of clients with respect to subdivision control. Um, I did work with uh, one of your former uh, municipal maintenance uh, administrators, um, Tony Fernandez, also with Mark Gifford with respect to uh, doing work for that agency. Um, I was involved in layout of a number of streets on behalf of the town at the request of the town. Uh, during the time that I was the town engineer, I operated in that capacity uh, without pay. It was voluntary, and uh, I'm here today also in a voluntary capacity, although I will say that um, I've been asked and I'm serving in the role as a peer consultant to the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals on projects that come before them, and I'm currently inspecting the work over at uh, Roseport Place off of Cranberry Highway that uh, the A.D. Makepeace Company is doing. I've also served as the uh, consultant for the town of Mashpee since 1980 to their planning board and their zoning board of appeals for much the same thing. And I've seen a variety of uh, local layouts in Mashpee come before the planning board for recommendations and so forth. So I'm familiar a little bit with the process. Um, I'm not about to attempt to um, explain or go through the process with respect to Chapter 82 on, of the General Laws, which is uh, your authorization to lay out streets within the town. Um, those have some legal implications, which I don't believe I'm qualified to express much of uh, uh, opinion on. Uh, there's also Chapter 79, which is your eminent domain uh, statute, which authorizes the board also to, to take streets on behalf of the town under that particular provision of Mass General Laws. Well, what I am here tonight uh, to try and explain, if I can, or provide you with some information with respect to some of the things that perhaps the board would want to consider uh, as it goes forward in the future about the layout of certain streets where people may petition your board to actually have those streets become town ways. Uh, that can happen in a couple of, uh, two or three different ways. Uh, perhaps there are streets in town that were in existence prior to the adoption of subdivision control in 1951 that have been private streets or been used by the public but don't have a designation as a town street. They may not have a town layout. In other words, meets and bounds description that goes around it to define it. There may be other streets which have been approved under the subdivision control law since 1951 that continue to be in private ownership, but perhaps because of the condition of it or other reasons, people may petition your board to actually have the town accept those streets. In that particular kind of a situation, either one of those situations, there is a procedure which I believe is important for the board to follow. And over the course of uh, the years, I believe that it has been that way. I don't believe that there's been any uh, deception or anything like that to try and circumvent the requirements. I think that it's been passed on quite well. Uh, there have been uh, some instances where I think uh, perhaps a little bit more information would have been better to provide people who have petitioned so that they would get in mind the procedure that really is essential to keep the procedure moving forward and also to make sure that every aspect of the law is, is uh, uh, abided by so that in the end process, the street is under acceptance by the town. Uh, the experience in Mashpee has been that most of the streets are accepted as easements. And I think the reason for that is, although I will defer to your town council with respect to the particular advice on this, uh, would be that there is a lot less liability involved in simply taking an easement to maintain it, to maintain the street, to plow the street, to do whatever is necessary to keep it in good condition when the town takes a street and takes the ownership of the street, that's a whole different ballgame. And as I say, it could involve some liability to it. So it might be something to consider in terms of what you would perceive that you want to do in the future with respect to that. One of the biggest um, concerns that I've had over, over a period of time has been 
that in some instances there have been, there's been the idea that a person could come in with a copy of the subdivision plan, place it before town meeting, ask the town meeting to vote that as a town street and not necessarily go through the proper procedure of getting a laid out street plan. Um, typically when someone in my position or an attorney or a real estate appraiser or uh, a broker might want to determine exactly what the condition of a particular street was, they will go to the town clerk's office and look at their records and see if there's something on record there that suggests it's a town street or whether it isn't. If there's nothing on file that says there is a layout of a particular street or there's nothing written there, there's nothing that the, the town clerk can say, well, yes, it is or it is not. But the, the, the fact that there would be a plan of a particular format there, which would identify not only the fact of the meets and bounds of the street, but also the fact that uh, it was filed with your board, that a copy of it was filed with the planning board for their recommendation to your board, it was filed appropriately with the town clerk at the time so that she has a record of when the filing was made. There was also, there would need to be an indication as to when the town accepted it at town meeting and when the final plan was then put on record with the town clerk for her uh, use and for the work, uh, for the use of the public in order to uh, be able to observe that from time to time. Um, I brought with me a copy of a, of a typical street layout plan. It was one that was done by my office back in the 1990s for Ladd Avenue uh, down in the East Wareham area. And on that plan there are two particular items which are essential and which you will not find in any subdivision plan. That is that the names of each of the abutting owners along that street are identified and the area that is within the street layout that's in front of each and every one of those owners is also identified and given an area because at some point in time during the process under Chapter 82, you need to make a notice to each of the abutting owners and there has to be an evaluation as to the value of that particular piece of land that's in the street and whether or not you're going to give a dollar to the abutting owner or whether there's some other value that is attached to it that you really have to uh, pay for. So those two things, the names of the owners and the, and the areas within the street that you're using um, to define the area of taking never occurs on a subdivision plan and for that reason it should never be used as one that would be the basis of a layout. You may take the information from that subdivision plan and simply reproduce it but all this other information goes on there and as well as the, uh, the signatures of the town um, board of selectmen, the town clerk, the town planning board and so forth. So that information is vital I will leave that copy of the plan with you so that you can have it as reference and uh, you. uh, if uh, you'd like to have me come back to talk about it again, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, I know that there are some concerns that you have with respect to snow plowing. I, I know that uh, issue has been out there. There may be a, a way that, and, and again, I would defer to your town council on this, but there may be statutes out there which you could adopt which would give you the authorization to continue plowing those streets even though they may be, I'll use the word private ways, even though they may be that status. Uh, the Town of Barnstable has a, a particular um, program in effect where they will do maintenance on streets from time to time and for a limited uh, amount of time. But I believe that special legislation needs to be enacted to grant the town permission to do that. Uh, and there is a certain amount of money that they can vote on, I believe, on an annual basis to make that possible. Now, how they go about um, paying for that, whether they do it under some form of a betterment, I'm not sure, but it's something that, uh, if you're interested in finding out, I could certainly look into it a little further for you for, for the benefit of knowing. Um, I realize that sometimes these things seem to be very detailed, but in order to do it in such a way that everybody understands what you've got and what you don't have, sometimes the details are essential. So uh, I think rather than try and explain much more at this particular point, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have or uh, see where we go from here. Mrs. Whiteside. I just have one question, Mr. Riley. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Um, the example that you brought with you, is it an accepted way or not? It was accepted by the town. Okay. 
So uh, the, the signatures don't show in the copy I have because it came out of my old file and it was just one that was stuffed in there. So okay, but I could go to the <clears throat> clerk's office here. Yes. And I could see the signatures that you should be able to find it. Okay, and and it has the names of the owners of each of the properties. On yes, that it does. Plant? Okay, and again, explain it to me one more time. Sure. It has the the measurements of so why, what why would be I, taken. Why don't I just give it to you now so you can take a look at it, but I can answer your question at the same time. Yeah, among the other things that a layout has is what, what are defined as meets and bounds. It's simply the directions and the, and the lengths of the distances that make up the street boundary. That's typically put into a description uh, which town meeting uh, could vote on but it is definitely part of the plan it's also also shown on the plan are the monuments that in this particular case were found at the time that we did the original survey um, those streets were laid out a number of years ago as private streets and they were bounded we found those bounds and they're shown on the plan um, that's another thing which is the important thing because at some point in the future if the town does accept a street as a town way and you or some private citizen wants to know the limits of that uh, street layout without monumentation it's going to be very difficult to determine so it's one of the things that either has to be uh, there ahead of time or as a part of the street layout uh, would have to be placed on the ground at a later date but it's an important aspect and one other question yeah thank you i, I think that was very helpful um, typically how wide is an accepted way you can make an accepted way any width that you deem adequate. Um, streets in the past, new streets in the past that were laid out by the town, and I'll, I'll uh, just use Charge Pond Road as an, as an example, was laid out, I believe, in 1941. It's 50 feet wide. Um, other streets in town, you could not lay out at 50 feet wide, private ways especially, uh, because the width simply isn't there. And if you attempted to lay out a street that was 50 feet wide in an area that has a private layout of only 30 feet, that means you're going to be making a taking over private property. That can turn out to be costly. So uh, to answer your question, there is no set distance. Um, it can be as narrow as 20 feet, as wide as 60 or 80 feet, depending on the circumstances and the layout that you want. And one more. Um, in order to get a fire engine, which is probably, I don't know how wide they are, but I, they're long. In order to get one of those through a curvy or a turned road, um, the wider the street is, the, the more likely it is to Well, be what, what you're referring to really is the pavement width. Yes. Which typically is much less than the width of the layout. Okay. Um, go back to your 50 foot uh, example. Uh, a subdivision street that has a 50-foot layout might have a 24-foot wide pavement, which means that there is um, 26 feet left, 13 on each side. that are used for utilities, for sidewalk construction, and, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So unless, unless the layout itself is very, very narrow and right out to the limits of the pavement, the layout is not a concern. Okay, but the street width is? The pavement width is pavement, a concern. Excuse me. Absolutely. Thank you. The pavement width must be what? It needs to be suitable for whatever traffic is going to use it. Now, if you go down it to Onset, I'm sure that the fellows on Onset Fire uh, have places that they find difficult to maneuver in because the streets are so narrow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that there are any in either there or, say, Indian Mound Beach or the, in the case of uh, the Wareham District, say, Parkwood or Pinehurst, uh, where they can't get in and get out reasonably. Uh, doesn't mean they don't have to back and fill occasionally, but I know of no instances where they really can't get in because of the width of the street itself is too narrow. Um, but most of I those examples you just gave are all non-accepted streets, am I correct? Not necessarily, no. Some are, in some are town streets and some are not. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. You're Rowe. welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah, okay. So um, thanks for coming, Charlie. You're and uh, I know you are a wealth of knowledge. Um, always known you to be that way, and I really appreciate you throwing your time in here. 
I know that um, some of the subdivisions in the old days were accepted as a blanket acceptance. They brought the subdivision itself in as town meeting to accept the roads and the layouts, whatever was on it, and that's what it was. And the meets and bounds were all messed up and everything else. So they, you know, and I know you've run into those things and we had to fix them. This, what we're talking about here is um, actually going out and having to do meets and bounds on the roads, each road, and prepare it for a, an, an official acceptance on, on town meeting floor. That's what, what, what Charlie would do. That's what you have right there. That's what he would have prepared, and he would have had accepted, uh, asked the road to be accepted and the beats and bounds be done. I'm not so sure that that's what we need to do here. I'm, not, I'm saying that there are roads out there that need to be dealt with at some point, and um, one of the ways in another town I, I was in years ago was we put a certain amount of money aside and we started to fix those problem roads a little at a time, you know, and catch up to them, get the meets and bounds. Okay, we did these ones, then we're going to do these, and we're going to do that. But this and all these folks are here about their roads that aren't going to get plowed. They're not going to get plowed because all of a sudden we came up with a law that says that we can't go on their private road. That's what they're here for. There has to be a statute, like Charlie was saying earlier, somewhere out there that will allow us to accept, that it will allow us to go back to plow these roads for these folks without literally spending the 20 years it would take to probably get all these roads accepted one by one, laid out, surveyed, uh, bring them up to code, whatever it requires, to get them up to snuff and everything else to where the town meeting could accept them. Patrick, this is, in a diff this is the town administrator's area that we're getting into. There is, there is a, no, there, it's not there, the town administrator's area. I'm sorry. I disagree with that totally. These folks are people that Patrick. are in this town that have uh, properties that all of a sudden we're telling them after – a gazillion years that we're not going to plow their thing. That's not strictly in his purview. That's in our purview. Patrick, there, there has been brought up by the town administrator a particular statute. The t town council has looked into it. This is an area that he has to come back to us to discuss. No, 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 that's wrong. This is in our purview. This is us. That's what we're here for is to protect these constituents out here. That's our job as selectmen. Our purview also is that under the Charter and Bylaws, we accept and process through when someone wants the road accepted. That's what we're discussing here. The next piece to discuss will be when the town administrator comes and talks to us about what he wants to do and what, the, what statute is, because the Board of Selectmen will probably have to bring it to town meeting for acceptance. You know what? This is just a lot of baloney, okay? It's a lot of crap, frankly, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is. Okay, and we're all trying to hide from all this whole thing, and we might save 25 grand here or there because we don't plow these folks' road. That's baloney. You know, this state used to, the state used to reimburse us for plowing folks over the years, okay? They used to reimburse us. So what we used to do, and all the towns did the same thing, they took out as many miles of road as they could, even roads that couldn't be plowed because they were loaded with trees, okay? And they threw those into the mix so the state would reimburse us the money. So we, for years we got reimbursed with this money, and now all of a sudden we're going to tell these people that they can't have their roads plowed. I'm sorry, that's baloney. Please, no, I think <laughs> this is a meeting here, please. Mr. Holmes. It's very nice meeting. I don't know what Thank that you. was all about, but. Um, when you, my question on this uh, piece here, you identify the abutters, right? That's correct. And then you said that you, you do a measurement. Mr. Is Chair, excuse me, point of order. There are people talking and I'm having a hard time over I'll the I'll ask condition. again, please be quiet so we can hear what's going on here. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to follow up on Mrs. Whiteside's uh, question. The road... Um, so, the the road itself is private, correct, and it belongs to the to the um, in, association. In most cases, where um, and this also deals with a statute that you can look into. I think it's Chapter One Eighty Five. It deals with 
um, the fact that if someone, when they grant a piece of property along a subdivision street, as an example, does not explicitly reserve unto himself all of the right title and interest in the street and only grants an easement for that person to pass over the street, then the title to that portion of the street in front of his property goes to that grantor or the grantee, whoever okay. buys the lot. So what you're looking at on that particular plan is a projection of the lot lines to the center of the street in each case, out to the center. And the area that is between his projected lot lines and the center is the area which would be under consideration for determination as to the value of that. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying there. Okay. And, uh, and my second question was on once a street, when, when does the width, you said it could be 50, it could be 20, it could be, <coughs> when is the width, does there, is there ever a point where that width becomes official? In other words, there's a variant width that you can have for a street, right? It's it could be 50 feet wide. It could be 25 feet wide. In on are, are, are you talking about some that are, are you 20, talking about the the right? layout width or the pavement width? The pavement width. The pavement width has nothing to do with the layout of the street. The layout are the paper lines within which you have the jurisdiction to maintain whatever is inside or to put utilities in it and so forth, and drainage, for example. Right. They're so imaginary lines which you never see on the ground. They're on paper. But they are defined by the monuments that I've suggested are on that plan. The pavement width can vary. Typically, it's 24 feet on, say, a 50-foot width on a, on a, um, a present-day subdivision, yeah. although the subdivision regulations here in town have two or three different categories. So if you've only got, I think it's up to nine lots, you can have an 18-foot pavement on a 40-foot layout. And, and they vary depending on the situation. But you don't, you don't see the pavement meandering from 20 to 50. That typically doesn't happen. No. Okay. Um, that's an entirely different setup. Um, so the layout width is what's important. That's exactly what we're talking about, yes. Um, there is there's also something uh, that really relates to what Mr. Tropiano was suggesting here too, and if I may just digress about that for a minute. I believe in Chapter 82, and again, your town council can advise you much better than I, and because I've tried to read it a couple of different times, I believe it gives the Sockman the authorization to do certain work in private ways that have been used by the public, traveling back and forth, and there are plenty of examples of those with the town. So you may have the authorization through Chapter 82 to do something from time to time. What that process actually is, I prefer not to speculate because I just don't know. Uh, but with respect to the, the street layout and street acceptance, there is one other important thing which you need to consider, and that would be if, if a uh, group of people petition you to, to uh, take a street over, to become a townway, for whatever reason, one of the things that you would want to do would be to go out and inspect it to see what sort of condition it's in. Because if it's less than standard, if, if it's less than acceptable, someone's going to have to pay some money at some time to repair that and put it in better condition. Right. So you need to have um, an inspection report of what the conditions of the street are with respect to the width of it. The width, I mean the pavement drainage, whether or not there are any potholes, whether it's just a gravel road, whether it's a paved road. Um, is it suitable for the present day use? Or is it the same as it was 40 years ago when the use was very minimal? Those are the kinds of things which you might want to look into if somebody comes to the town with an actual petition to say, we want you to accept our street. In the case of the subdivision plan, it's also important, I believe, to note whether or not uh, the final approval is granted by the planning board for what construction you see. There are many instances where people will come into the planning board and ask for lot releases without the road being fully completed. Yeah. But it's imperative that at the time they do that, that proper security is posted with the town so that subsequently, when everything is sold out, that road will be built to the final standards that were approved by the board. That hasn't happened in some instances, and, and it's, it's too bad because I think um, perhaps it could have been prevented in some cases, and I'm not casting blame on anybody. But that's an important aspect also. 
because with all these this pieces of information in front of you, now you can make a determination as to whether you think it's something you want to do. You may, ne may decide as a board that, no, this isn't worth it to do for one reason or another. Right. And so if I could just finish my time. Um, I may be in the same boat as many of these people, um, but I also have to sit here and represent the town, not just myself. And so it's not crap. We didn't go out and find the law and create a law. The law is already in the books. Now, the decision for the board and the town administrator and town council and others is, is how does the town bring all this together and do it right? You don't just say, okay, we're going to keep plowing because there are liability issues. You can't just say we're going to accept these streets because once you take over some of these streets, and I think that's the situation I'm in, <coughs> if the town took over that street, as Mr. Trapiano may suggest, I, I'm calling him tomorrow morning to come out and pave it and, and drain it and do all this work. You own it, fix it. Whereas I would expect there's some kind of a process that we've seen with some over the last three years where when folks brought those roads to us, um, Mr. Gifford and others did some kind of an inspection and if the road wasn't uh, up to standard, they fixed the road and then brought it back to us before we would take that step and then go to town meeting. I believe that, I don't think that was a made up process. No, there's I think no. that's there's the process. Our planning board regulations require that in order for a road to be accepted. Reclaiming my time again. Um, so, well, uh, so I agree that there's a process. That, that's um, one process. It's not there just cop lunch, everybody yeah. falls in the same bucket. Yeah. There is a process. And I think we need to make sure we get it right to follow that, it. That is one. Um, another process could be, and I'm not suggesting this is the primary one, but um, much the same way that uh, your board has assessed betterments for sewer construction and the way that the water districts assess betterments for water main construction. The same thing um, I know has been done in the case of Mashpee because I'm uh, personally familiar with it, that they will take streets and at the same time, the town appropriates the funds to do whatever they have to do to build that road to the present day standards. And then uh, through the betterment process, the people who live on those streets are assessed the betterment for the cost of that uh, upgrade. That is another method that might be explored. I'm not suggesting it's the, the proper one in each case, uh, but it is a method that I know is used. So it would be those folks, those folks uh, on your list right the folks who own that piece if we had if the town were to follow that rule and fix the road then those folks uh, whose name is the abutters who attached to this list right you if there were 12 of them and it was twelve thousand dollars to fix the road you just charge them each a thousand bucks is that That's way basically what how Mashpee has done yes they have yeah Thank they you. use that Jim. quite frequently oh I'm sorry were you finishing I was just going to say they use that quite frequently because we see the, uh, sitting with the planning board, I see the road layouts come before the planning board and they make a recommendation to the board of selectmen before it actually goes to the town meeting vote and before they actually do the layout work. Uh, but they have that process and they actually do an evaluation of the construction that's needed, come up with a cost, and then that cost is apportioned to the various owners along the street. Yeah. You know, and just thank you. It was nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, sir. And uh, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Mrs. Whiteside, you have a question? But I can't remember what it is. I think, <laughs> no, that's okay. It had to do with something that you were asking. But, um, oh yes, no, I do remember what it is. If a group of people live on Road X and they want to have it accepted by the town, but one of the people who lives on the road doesn't want to do it, can that petition go forward? I'm not sure that it can, although I believe that if, there, if you're dealing with the situation where you're looking to do a minimum amount of maintenance and it's under the program similar to what Barnstable has, mm -hmm. I believe that if 51% of the people on that street want it done, that the town can go forward with that. So but that again, would I'm, you're talking... Uh, some legal questions that I don't okay. really have good expertise on and I don't want to lead anybody astray on that. Okay. Um, but that would be, um, may I just continue that sort of question statement? That would be something that town council 
would research for us I, um, and help and I guide defer us to on. him on that, but yep. I suspect he could. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. And again, thank you very much for coming before us. You're I welcome. think it's um, wonderful that you came before the firing line. Thank you. <laughs> this is Tropiano. <laughs> I want to ask the town council a question, if I don't mind. Uh, I, I seem to remember this. Uh, we had some issues with roads being coming before town meeting back in early 2000. And uh, they put them in front of the town meeting asking for acceptance. Uh, without upgrading the roads. And if I remember right, we changed, and we either created a bylaw or we used the planning board regulations to make it so that in order to accept the road, it had to be brought up to the standard. Is that not the case? We made that bylaw when I was a student. No. I mean, I, I believe that if they bring it in front of us now at town meeting, it has to be that first off, they have to do the meets and bounds. It has to be up to standard before the town meeting can actually go ahead and, and accept the road. Mr. Bowen, would you like the form? Oh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, it depends. Okay. All right. Um, let, I'll, and I'm going to circle back to it, if okay. I may. Yeah, go ahead. Trump, yeah. That's why we asked you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you opened the door. Now That's you're right. Sorry. <laughs> and now you're going to walk through it. <laughs> yeah, well, you bet. Um, here's what the, the thing that precipitated this, this whole business, the crowd that you've got here, was the letter from the inspector general that said it's illegal to, to plow private roads. So the issue here, I think, is how do you make plowing private ways legal? And... There's a bunch of different ways that you can get to it. Now, if there's an emergency, well then, you know, and a truck needs to get to somebody's house, so there's, a, there's a big problem, we can find a way to plow it. You know, emergency situations, they can be dealt with. So yeah, this be, isn't a question of It'd be of too late, though, by the okay. time they get it plowed. Right. Yeah, if it's an emergency, you, you, you plow it. You get, Please be quiet so you get we can to, do You this. get the ambulance in there, you get the fire truck in there, you plow it. And then we figure out the, the financial end and the legality end later. You plow it. But emergency remedies are not the solution to ongoing regular plowing. Uh, you don't want regular emergencies. So, you know, using your emergency powers is not the way to address the situation because you just get another letter from the inspector general. Now, we have a bylaw on the books, and there is a statute. Chapter 40, Section 6N, Private Ways, Temporary Repairs, Ordinances, or Bylaws. And what the statute says is the town may adopt a bylaw, and you have done that, uh, that allows temporary repairs to private ways. So it's on the books. So the question is, does that help you? And the answer is no, because snow plowing is not a temporary repair. Moreover, if we're going to go out and plow the road on a regular basis, that's not a temporary fix. That is a routine matter. So even though we have this great bylaw on the books, and even though uh, persons living on a private way can ask to have their private way repaired, and even though we can charge for that repair uh, and do the repair once we've been paid, that doesn't help the snow plowing situation. So, Let's just for the moment set aside emergency issues. Let's set aside uh, temporary repairs to private ways because neither of those things is going to help you. Now, there are two ways that you can address the snow plowing issue. And you've been discussing one of them. One is the street acceptance procedure. Mr. Rowley has described in summary fashion how that would work. Uh, to answer, now Patrick, to answer your question in particular, uh, you know, two things, uh, as Charlie I think indicated, you know, people have the wrong idea of how street acceptances work. It's not show up, at just, it's not put an article on town meeting, town meeting ex uh, approves, the street's accepted, the statute has a very formal process, and that process begins with you. And the process could end with you if you decide not to lay out the way. So 
if you're presented with a plan that looks substandard, uh, if you're presented with something that's going to require a major expenditure of work, uh, it would be within this board's rights. I'm not saying you're going to do it, but it'd be within your rights to say to the persons asking that the street be accepted, hey, we're not going to lay this road out unless you make some repairs. And you specify what you'd like to see, and then at, at such time as it's brought up to whatever condition you deem appropriate, and again, you deem appropriate, uh, at that point you could decide to lay out the road, and at that point uh, there could be an article on the warrant, and then town meeting could vote to accept your layout. So town meeting's not accepting the street, and this is what everybody gets wrong. Town meeting has no power to accept a street. Town meeting is voting to accept your layout of the street. And that layout can be as detailed or as fuzzy as you want. You can put as many conditions up front before you decide to lay out the street, uh, as many conditions as you want or as few as you want. It's up to you. So uh, Mr. Rowley has, has talked in summary fashion about the street uh, acceptance process. Certainly, if the street is accepted, it's a public way like every other way, it's going to get plowed. So again, keeping our eye on the prize here, which is you know, how do we get these streets plowed legally? A and by the way, this question has, been go has gone back at least to 1997, and, and I think I can remember at least three town administrators discussing this, uh, not including the present one. Uh, so this is nothing new. Uh, but street acceptance is one way to do it. Now, the other way to do it, uh, and some of the folks had said, well, you know, what can we do to get our streets plowed? You know, the folks don't necessarily want to go through this whole street acceptance process. Uh, they are concerned about perhaps the potential cost of, you know, having a 40-foot paved uh, right-of-way, uh, perhaps not everyone on a particular street has the frontage to allow that. I mean, certainly there are plenty of areas of town where 40 feet wide would put the street in people's living rooms, so that's not necessarily a solution. But what do you do to get streets like that plowed? If you take a look at Chapter 40, Section 6C, and I, I'm, well, I'm just going to read it to you. It says, a city or town which accepts this section in the, in the manner provided in Section 6D may appropriate money for the removal of snow and ice from such public ways within its limits and open to public use as may be designated by the selectmen. So, step one, a town which accepts this section, 46C, in the manner provided by Section 6D may lawfully appropriate money to plow private ways open to public use. Well, let's just, a little footnote here. What is a, pri what is a private way open to public use? Uh, a private way open to public use is a way, and Charlie, you correct me if you disagree, because you, you've been doing this a long time. A private way open to public use is a way where you have more than just the people who live on it who actually use it. So for example, if you have a little dead end street that has two people on it, uh, it is highly unlikely, although you, you could decide to call it a private way open to public use, but it, it is highly unlikely that factually that that would be considered <coughs> a way open to public use because nobody other than the two people who live on it is going to travel on it on a regular basis. Okay, so there's your footnote. A town which accepts Section 6C in the manner provided by Section 6D. Well, what does 6D says? It says, Section 6C shall be submitted for acceptance to the registered voters uh, of a town at an annual town election upon petition of 200 registered voters, or 20% of the total number of registered voters substantially in the form of the following question which shall be placed on the official ballot used for the election of officers at such town election. And then the statute has a, a, a canned ballot question that you have to use. So 200 registered voters, 
or 20% of the registered voters of the town can petition to have this ballot question at an, and it has to be the annual town election. Uh, and if it is accepted, then plowing becomes legal because when you look at chapter 40, section 7, it says any town which accepts this section or has accepted corresponding provisions of earlier laws for the removal of snow and ice uh, may do so. So the tools are there. You, you can go through the street acceptance and tackle these streets one by one by one by one, lay out petitions, notice to abutters, or you have this other mechanism uh, which is the ballot question approach. And it's only when the voters have voted to accept Section 6C through a ballot question that it becomes lawful to spend money to plow private ways. So now there is another option. Uh, you could get a special act, I suppose. Town meeting, okay. Um. Through you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bowen, you're only talking about plowing. Only plowing. If, if you were to follow either one of those processes, that would allow the town Mr. Chair, to plow the street. Excuse me. There continues to be talking in the audience. I'm, I'm having. That's no, not you, sir. Oh. There are people talking over you, oh, and it's very I difficult to you. hear with the air conditioning, besides which it's rude. I'll ask again for people, please do not talk. If it becomes a problem, I'll have to ask you to leave. Thank you. Um, I was asking, oh, plowing, right. So if we took either one of those approaches and in the town now legally can plow private way, what happens, does that automatically waive liability of the town if while in the process of that plowing, they damage a road or they cause damage to that private way? No, absolutely not. Um, so we would, we would go through this process for the privilege of plowing a private road and then if we damage it, we have to fix a private road. Well, of course, I'd argue that we didn't, but uh, if, well, the, if, the, yeah. if you've seen some of these yeah. private ways, you would understand what I'm talking about. No, I, I've, I, I, I do know what you're talking about, and we... And, and conversely, yeah. that question, if the town is using their equipment on some of these private ways, if one of those two procedures were um, accepted and town equipment was damaged, in the, in the uh, process of plowing that road, would then the people who own that road be responsible to pay for the uh, damaged equipment or repair that equipment? Uh, and that may be a little more detail, but you yeah. understand what I'm saying? No, I understand. Right? In other words, uh, uh, when, why would we want to go through a process like that to open ourselves up to more liability? Yeah. If, right? If the, if the question is, is there exposure to the town right. in plowing private ways? You know, it's just in its most general sense. Yes. We had that exposure today, but I'm saying because we followed one of your two processes, it still doesn't get the town out of, out of the exposure, doesn't limit our exposure. Uh, from a, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, from, uh -huh. a, from a exposure point of view, uh, if you went the street acceptance route, and as part of the street acceptance, as Mr. Rowley had commented, you know, you can accept a layout without an easement or a fee for the, the property that underlies the road. Don't recommend that uh, because then you're still in a potential liability situation because you have no ownership rights whatsoever. Or you can accept the layout and consequently the street with an easement that specifies the purposes for which you may travel, maintain, and repair, and plow. Uh, or you can take it in fee, and you own it. 
certainly from a liability point of view, your liability is going to be less f uh, having either the easement or the fee. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Bowen. Thank you. We've basically taken the information and we thank everybody for both of you coming forward. I did not intend for Mr. Bowen to come up here at this time because that would be another meeting where we're talking about the legal issues, et cetera. Mr. Bowen has brought up what I tried to bring out a little bit earlier that we have a legal opinion that came down about certain issues. We have a, a street acceptance program policy. Everything's in place. How we do that, it's not new. It's been in place. It requires the plan, basically goes to the Board of Selectmen for a petition. Then it goes to the planning board. And the planning board basically looks and inspects the road, meets and bounds, makes sure everything is there, comes back with a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, and then it goes forward. Is how it goes. Then it goes to town meeting and back. That's been in place for a while. Uh, uh, can I'm I sorry, I'm not going to recognize Mr. anybody today. Excuse me. Not tonight. Uh, you're, uh, we're not talking about that tonight. And no one can give answers. Sir. The town administrator, you folks, you're not willing to answer it. The town clerk couldn't answer it. There are three lists that you are providing. The town administrator providing the Working on that, and if you wait your time, I will explain what's going to happen, please. You want to fix my street? You damaged it by plowing. Sir, please. What we are trying to do, as I stated before, is get the basic guidelines of where we were, how we got to where we are. We could have not done nothing at all and just let it go for the IG's answer, and that was it. What we've tried to do is put things together, have this meeting right away, and deal with this immediately and not ignore it. So I want everybody to understand that we're not going out and saying we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. We have, we, <sighs> sir, I treat everybody with respect. I'd expect the same from you to me. You're, in, you're interrupting the middle of my speech. I don't do that to you. Thank you. All I'm trying to get to again is that we're, this is the first piece. We will continue to have a discussion. The public will be involved where they can interact with us. I'm hoping to have a separate meeting down the line in a few weeks with the public discussing this so we actually can go back and forth. But right now we're de dealing with three different areas and we're discussing the first area, which is what we started with today, which is the baseline. We have issues, just so you understand, is I've spent probably about 15 hours in the last three days looking up information, looking at lists that the gentleman's talking about. There are three different lists. It looks as if the lists are not up to date. I've asked, basically, the municipal maintenance sent me some questions with issues. The town clerk sent me some issues, and also the office upstairs in the selectman's office. We have issues to deal with. In order to deal with them, we have to find out what we've been doing and what we've not been doing correct. This board is not going to sit back and ignore the things. This board is basically, as far as I'm concerned, this is our responsibility. If we inherit it, that's too bad. It happened on our watch. We will fix it and take care of it. But you have to deal with it and let us go step by step and do it correctly. Because if we do it wrong, it will be worse than we started. I appreciate everybody's time. And we will have a meeting down the line and try and do this. But we will have meetings over the next weeks on this issue. Thank you. I'm not taking any questions today, sir. We will announce a special meeting through the town website. We'll put it in the newspaper, Wareham Week. We'll have it listed. I imagine the two other papers, the Wareham Courier and Standard Times. We haven't made a decision of when we're going to do this, but it'll be in a few weeks. Our, our regular chairman is out this week, so we'll do it on the 9th. We will have this on our agenda on the 9th also. tell you that three times. It's not the time and the place. Coming during the coming during the day, see the town administrator's office. Please. You don't do this at a public meeting. Oh. You, you, can, you, you, you can you can you can you can call me on my cell phone, which is on the town website, or, or or you can send me an email. You send me what your information is. Give me a detail. I will get to the right person in town that can do it. 
you know, the selectmen, I'm not trying to bypass, but the selectmen can't get involved with day-to-day -day because we get in trouble with our employees. If you have an issue, tell me what the issue is, and we'll deal with it. Alan Slavin. It's A Slavin. Small A. S-L-A-V-I-N. I know that this is the time and place to bring up. I know. Town Hall is open five days a week, and this should be addressed in, during the day. I understand that, but to do this in the middle of a public meeting is not... I wouldn't do that in your house. It's that wasn't meeting. a hearing, ma'am. It's not a public hearing. It's no. We have laws on these meetings that they have to be controlled a certain way, otherwise... Thank you. That's Thanks how it so works. Much. We didn't make the laws up. Thank you. We'll take about a five-minute recess so everybody to calm down a little bit, and then we'll go back to work. We don't need a recess. No, we're all set now. Let, let's, They're all gone now. Yeah, we're set. Close the doors. Let's yeah, go. we're all set. I'll take that back. We're not going to have a recess. We'll go back to... Uh, the agenda. Huh? Let's no, see. We, we just, got we sewer you. business. We didn't get up. We have no we, sewer business. No sewer business. Uh, the only thing we do have is contract two. We really need to do set a date for a separate meeting, not on our regular uh, Tuesdays, to deal with this. I have no information for that. So we haven't yet. So I would say that if everybody over the next uh, look at the next two or three weeks, and everybody just send it to Peter, you know, if it's a Saturday, what time works so we can come up with something. Okay. We won't deliberate. There'll be no answer back, and we'll just submit a few days. We can take care of that because that issue really needs to be dealt with as well as this issue. There are some, um, there is some information on the audit report that actually y you can look at that and. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, that there, so is, there is some financial that, information in there. The section, uh, discussion on guidelines of the town administrator. Oh, We're moving on from that. All right, the next would be discussion of the railroad station at Merchant's Way with CETA. Mr. Pina. Mr. Pina, I'll speak to you. Um, I brought up the fact that the, the waste baskets actually have ashtrays on yes. the top of them and ask people to please put their butts in the, <laughs> in the trays. You're speaking about the cigarette butts, right? Yes. Huh. Um, and the other thing that I would ask before you start talking is please don't use red mulch anymore. It's, uh, yep. we, we, it has we didn't a dye use it. in it. We, we haven't used it. We used black mulch. Oh, I'm not sure what happened at the Hess station, but we used black mulch. Okay. If you look in front of the uh, post office, right. uh, you'll see that it's black mulch in front of the uh, Pizzoli Square. It's black so mulch. So you didn't put that red mulch? I, I, no, I don't believe that we put that down. Because it has dye in it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank I, you. I recommended black mulch, and we'll, uh, we're actually going to um, do all of the tree boxes that uh, on, on, uh, on Main Street. We're not quite finished, but we're going to continue with black mulch and all of those awesome. and put the... the, the uh, I think they're junipers that are there. No, I think they're locusts. Um, and there was an excellent suggestion by a member of the public earlier this evening. He's going to bring it to town hall in writing. But it was asking for a white line along the curb as you come from the post office toward the hospital. Um, because you, you can see the yellow lines, but you can't actually see the bump outs um, unless it would be lined in accordance with you know, mass law or whatever. And I think it's a very good suggestion. I've had the same problem um, not being able to actually see the curb. And if mm -hmm. there's a white line next to those curbings, I think that would be gutter a great marker. idea. The gutter marker. I'll, I'll speak to the engineer about it. I mean, I think typically, are they going to put a bicycle line down there or something? Is that in the Well, park? you know, it, it was very fascinating to listen to this conversation you had earlier because that road actually is 24 feet wide, yep. with each lane being 12 feet, and the average uh, width of a car is six feet wide, and your question about uh, the fire engines, they're about nine feet wide, uh, if you count the, uh, the mirrors on both sides. So, so uh, it, it, it's, it would not be prudent, in my opinion, to mock a bicycle lane in there. In fact, bicycle lanes will have to travel in the actual travel lane. 
you, you really, I've, I've told Mr. Pena, I've stopped on the street and talked with him and um, complimented him on the progress. I think it's, it's really nice, um, except for the red mulch. Um, <laughs> but I personally have run over the bumps four times, and two of them were getting out of the way of a fire engine mm -hmm. on a call. One of them, I was coming out between the bank and the liquor store towards the post office and turning right. You cannot do it mm -hmm. without coming into the middle of the road. It's impossible without, mm -hmm. I mean, unless you drive one of those little squint cars. Um, you, you cannot stay on your side of the road. I, Have I wasted enough of your time now, dear? You all set? Yes. I'm good. Uh, good evening, Jean. Good evening, Sal. How you doing? Basic reason what we're here for is we had uh, a while back, if ever, I'm not sure if everybody remembers, I took on the assignment of trying to make the uh, train station a business and visitor center, which has been one of my pet projects. Uh, and when I turned in to pull the uh, 1953, I think it is, uh, deed from New Haven Railroad to the town of Warham, uh, I ran into uh, a buzzsaw is the best way to put it. It turns out that the building itself has to be maintained for transportation use and it's 1,500 square feet. Uh, there's all kinds of other little glitches and everything else. And as I kept going through, I was trying to figure out uh, the property. And it looks like the property that we got from the railroad was a piece of property, not a throughway. We're question we have questions about whether or not Merchant's Way in one of our listings says TA town, town accepted, but yet on the assessor's maps and everything, it just shows a piece of property number 1052. And I believe you're basically a, about to do a survey of the property back there to take care of a lot of the issues because we have an issue with between Cumberland Farms and the Hess Station. We have two other inserts that show that as being the original property that the railroad gave, the, gave to the town. And none of these are actually public or private ways technically. So these issues have all come up. I've got paperwork for you that I've put together with the deed, with the app map, and with an actual technical map mm -hmm. that's in detail, it's hard to read, you need, a, you need a microscope to look at the damn thing, excuse me. <laughs> um, the idea is that we have a train station. We know that uh, there's some dynamics going on with uh, Mass Bay Colony, Mass DOT Rail, uh, South Coast Rail. There's a lot of things moving in different directions than they were before, and Warham could be in line through Mass DOT and MBTA for a train station. Obviously, the train station has to have a raised platform, whether it's north of where it is now, and they build it up, what they do, that station under the, under the deed, if I read correctly, I believe that they can come back and tell us that they want to reuse that particular station for a train station anytime they want. It's in the deed. And we have to maintain, um, I think it's two bathrooms heated, actually, as well. So in looking forward to that, my basic question for you to come here was giving us some direction of where you intend to try and go with the train station because that looks like that one piece is gonna come down the line in a year. My understanding is that the Cape Flyer is running at a pretty good percentage that they're looking to possibly expand the whole program mm -hmm. and more money coming down, which means they may have the money to actually. three years ago, Gene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they're basically going to, uh, I believe, put money into possibly the, you know, a raised platform or an actual platform that goes out of ways. And I'm probably speaking a little out of turn but there are different things going on. There's different mm -hmm. emphasis going on, and I guess the MBTA has a more interest in, I think it's uh, Representative Strauss, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, has a, a real push. I think he's out of Mattapoisett possibly, and he has a real push right now to get train service all the way through and have it more active, which is just not what was on the plate earlier. Right. So I'll leave it up to you to give us some idea where you're at and what sure. we can do. Sure, well, I, I guess the, the, the first, uh, my first response to you is about the area back there. I mean, I, I, again, I was fascinated to listen to the earlier conversation because I knew that Merchant's Way- on the wrong Way, side of the table. Yeah, well, <laughs> really. <laughs> I knew that Merchant's Way was not uh, uh, an accepted street. Um, and, but what I wasn't aware of until I started investigating was that we don't have the meets and bounds. Mm. So we don't know any of the property lines back there. So what, what I did was um, <clears throat> I a asked my board if we could uh, bring on a consultant to help us do that, to help us look at the meets and bounds. So um, we've identified a consultant that we're going to go forward with to, to look at the meets and bounds. And the second piece of that is um, we're going to do some test borings because as you are aware, we found some contaminated soil 
uh, in on Main Street when we were digging. We found some soil with petroleum in it, and then we found uh, an abandoned uh, gas tank uh, on Merchant's Way. So our thought at this point was to go in and do test borings all along Merchant's Way, about every 100 feet. And that would give us three very important pieces of information. Um, first, it would tell us where the water uh, levels are, so we'd understand how much uh, uh, ground we have before we hit water. Second, uh, it would tell us uh, whether or not there were contaminants in the soil. And, and third, it would give us the quality of the soil. And, and why that's important is because uh, we need to understand that to determine whether or not we can treat stormwater by going underneath the road. So these two pieces are integral to your fundamental question about the train station because without an understanding of the meets and bounds, we can't design around that train station. Is there anything you need from us going forward for assistance as going, you know, once you get your survey done, are there things you're going to need from us? If well, so, you'll come before us, but I'm just, I'm looking long term now to have some Yeah, I, well, I, I we guess the first plan. thing would be is we, we're going to have to come up with a road acceptance plan. So at some point, we'll need to come before you to get a road acceptance plan in place so we can accept the road. And, I, and my, the, uh, the Waterfield Design Group, which is doing our concept drawings, that's one of the first things that they, they took the, basically they took an area of view and looked at the plot lines as they were laid out on the assessor's map, which are not the surveyed lines. So we've been working with those lines, but we need to actually do the survey in order to come up with a real design for it. I also think that what's really important is for us to be able to, um, and it's a tight squeeze, and I know it, it is, but I, I think it's worth a shot, is there's a Mass Works grant that's due September 14th. And so I would like to go forward and put in for that grant to get some assistance with the development of that area. Um, so I think that that's also a piece of it, because if we have the railroad station that's willing to contribute some money, I've been in talks with Gatra, who's willing to do that as well. Um, we, we have, uh, we've talked with the town administrator and municipal maintenance about using some Chapter 90 funds, and so, and we've got some grant funds for stormwater remediation uh, that we have, and potentially some funds uh, from the bike path for design components only. Um, in order to help us, and if we can put a package like that together, I think there's a really good opportunity for us to receive a grant in light of the fact that the, the, the state government is interested in bringing the train down here. We'll also have to, one further thing is we'll have to put in a, um, a pedestrian crossing as well. Um, we know right now that people go across there all the time to go crabbing and, uh, and whatnot, and uh, I think it's really important that uh, in my prior discussions with the, with the train, uh, uh, th th they were concerned about the liability issues if they're running a train coming through here and would support us putting a pedestrian crossing in. Do we need to reach out to Mass DOT Rail, et cetera? Because when they came before us, they, um, I won't say they were overly happy, but they basically told us no trespassing, right. you know, et cetera. And right, and uh, that's the meeting I spoke, I spoke uh, to them at that meeting, and they said that they would support it. You know, I, I spoke on the side to the, to the director there, and he said, yes, we would want to support that because we don't want to have any accidents. Well, again, what I ask is should we try and get a meeting together? I would love to see that. That'd be great. Right. If you could put the pieces together and schedule that in. Absolutely. Be happy to do that. And the other, because what I want to make sure is that we have all the pieces in place, because if we go and go for Max, a Mass Works grant mm -hmm. that I'm f pretty familiar with, we mm -hmm. want to make sure we have everything exactly correct. How long is that survey going to take to do? Well, we're, we're hoping that it'll take three weeks. That's what we put in the timeline for the survey to get it done in three weeks. Because part of the MassWorks process is you have to produce, I believe it's a 25, but it could be a 50% design. So that will require that survey to be in place before we can put the design together. Okay. So we've got a tough timeline, but I think it's doable. Um, we've got. Uh, Green Seal, who is currently the clerk of the works and who also has partnered with us on the uh, wa stormwater uh, grants, they're, they're involved and they're interested in helping us. Waterfield Design that's doing the concept drawings would be willing to go forward and continue with the design process. So I have some resources available to me, which uh, certainly with some e expertise, uh, and I, I think it's doable. It's, it's a tough push, but I think we can get it done. And the stormwater remediation that you have the plan, which is a little off off subject, 
that process there is going forward because obviously we have issues with the absolutely. contaminated soils. Yeah, absolutely, it's going forward. And we also put in for a 319 grant for about $400,000. Now we won't know that we get that till later in the fall, um, uh, but we're optimistic about that too. We got support from the Buzzards Bay Estuary who funded our initial stormwater grant. And, and because they funded that initial stormwater grant, the, that made that water body, which is, by the way, a Category 5 water body, yep. which means it's not fishable or swimmable, um, uh, th that made that a priority area for, the Dep for DEP. So the, gr the 319 grant goes to priority areas. Okay. I would also ask for the CEDA board if they would, when they have things kind of dialed in more, to come back before the board to explain, you know, the basic problem, process of where you're going to be and what's going on as well. So we're all on the same page because this is, a, it's a long-term project and mm -hmm. it's critical that every piece is in place before Absolutely. we do these things. Absolutely. Because like I said, I have concerns about the, uh, you know, stormwater remediation only because I have pretty good knowledge of some of the soils back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And until you get those meets and bounds, basically you have to go to the railroad monuments, which is probably buried in the tracks mm -hmm. in the middle somewhere mm -hmm. and come back out to the street. That's the only way you're going to get proper lines. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of the survey work is not accurate anymore. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board, please? I have some comments and questions. Um, I think I'm one of two people who actually was here during the 1954 hurricane. And during the 1954 hurricane, the entire Merchant's Way was underwater, up to about 12 feet. Mm -hmm. All of the cars along there that were parked there, they, and a lot of them were commuter people who were taking the train to Boston, um, were submerged. To my knowledge, that area actually is in a floodplain, and it may in fact be in a vector zone according to the federal government. I'm all for public transportation. I think that the Cape Flyer is fabulous. I am not, however, in favor of trying to squeeze something into a space that's not big enough for it. And I personally think that that's the case. Um, in 1954, some cars were much bigger. <laughs> um, and I was much smaller. But I do remember the devastation that was on that street. At the moment, there are one, two, two and a half gas stations there. They would be submerged. The fire station would be submerged. I don't think it's the right place for a train station. I think it's a beautiful view. I think people, when they see that vista of open water, are going, wow, awesome. I think looking down the bay is fabulous. But I don't think it's a place for a train station. Mm -hmm. There is no parking, and you cannot create parking when there isn't any land. You're not old enough to remember. But there was a train depot stop, the old Tremont, where the rails crossed. It's a very enticing location. It's, I would call it north east of, of um, Wareham Crossing. Another location that strikes me as being more appropriate, and that isn't in a, isn't in a floodplain. Mm -hmm. Another one that strikes me as being more appropriate is what I will call the current Walmart location. Um, when Walmart moves to West Wareham, there will be enormous amounts of free parking. They, if you look at a GPS map, you can see that there are lots of acres that would be available for turnarounds and for train storage. Um, if you look, for instance, at the, where the Lakeville line ends and, you know, where they have the, the lines going. I'm probably one of the only two people in the room who actually rode the train before it was discontinued. I'm not talking about the trash train. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the, the dude, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I think that, that looking, and again, I, I, I marvel at how Main Street looks. I am pleased beyond pleased with how the back of 
I call it Bacadicus, that's going to be the name of the street for me forever, how it looks. I think that when the railway came through and mowed everything down and left the trees and the rose bushes, it just looks fabulous. It's, 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 it's awesome. It's not the right place to put a train station. Now, I understand that railroads can do whatever they want, wherever they want, whenever they want. But we as a town can choose to offer more appropriate locations where there already is parking, where already the rail goes by, which would be far less damaging to the environment. Um, and you don't have to believe in global warning. I can just tell you that in 1954, the street was submerged. There used to be a line painted on the old Cornwell building. Um, I think I promised to give you a book that showed you that, but I will. So those are my comments and my questions. Patrick, what do you think the chances of getting the merchants to agree to the acceptance of that way? See, right now, they, they technically own to the center of it. If they own the properties along Merchants Way, they own to the center of the roadway because that's how it works. No, 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 because the railroad's so, on the other side. No. Well, the railroad owns to the center, and they would own to the center on the other side. No. They own right where Mer Excuse me. Where Merchants Way is, Patrick, is in the middle of the property that was given to the town by the railway. If you look at the, if you look at the actual piece yeah. of the actual property. It's not an accepted deed, way. Is that correct? Well, I'm trying to find out because, unfortunately, the town clerk's office has TA next to it, which means town accepted on our list, and I don't see where it's ever been done. But the bottom line is that property, the road is in the middle of the property. The, the railroad property goes on both sides of the road as it exists right now. Okay, so it, the railroad was actually on both sides of the Merchants Way? I mean, on both sides? The property went up and butted up against the property line of the other, of the other businesses. There was the no, other buildings? Yeah. So they have no parking? They have wherever their parking is in back, but there's no street area for them. What happened there, that was the parking lot originally for the railroad years ago. Okay, so and their property butted against the railroad parking area. All right. So to get to the point, that 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 and that actually even makes it worse. That's going to be uh, a, a real work for trying to get those abutters to say, okay, let's accept this way. Well I think that's the the point of us trying to do the meets and bounds study to see what exactly is going on because when I as I got involved in the project, I asked those questions and, it, it, and no one could tell us the boundaries. Uh, so again, they were using uh, plot lines from the right. assessor's maps and they were using aerial views to try to map out the area. So I think it's really important for us to do that as a first step. And, and to your point, I, I, I'm certainly open to any kind of development back there that makes sense. I'm not gonna make that call, I'm gonna make a recommendation. So as we go forward, I think part of, and this is what I try to help the public understand is, you can go forward with an idea, but as you start to work through that idea, you start to see the challenges and you have to adjust the idea against the realities of it. And that's why I've tried to surround myself with experts to come to the table to help us figure it out. Because I don't think it's been done in the past. If the last, uh, and maybe Gene can speak to this, but the, the last thing that was done was a study by the Cecil Group um, that spoke back in 2006 or 2008? 2006 and seven. Yeah, that, that, uh, that actually, um, because everybody thinks that I made this stuff up, I, that I kind of created this, but, but the Cecil Group actually did a whole study that talked about renovating Merchant's Way and dealing with the train station and all of those things. So I'm following up on a prior study that was actually put in place that, that, uh, that, that uh, was prepared for the town, and I'm trying to make some of the things happen in the study. Right. So if, if it makes sense for us to do it, then I think we would do it. And certainly any recommendations we have will come before this board and you'd have an opportunity to comment and, and, uh, and make a decision on it. Okay. I, I, agree, I agree with uh, my counterpart over here. She um, spoke actually, I think there's not enough parking over there to have a train station, mm -hmm. frankly, especially a commuter rail. Mm -hmm. I think it just, it just doesn't fit. It's, it was nice when it was nice and quaint and you know you had a few people and there was whatever. And it actually in 2002, when um, the, town, the uh, state was trying to uh, expand its railroad service, um, 
Serped and all that was involved. The whole thing was going on. Cindy Chamberlain, myself, and Renee Fernandez Abbott, and some others, uh, we tried to get them to do this section, do us first, as far as bringing the train through here for the commuter rail, as opposed to doing New Bedford. Uh, New Bedford was going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and ours was relatively inexpensive because the tracks were actually in pretty good shape. The upgrade was not too bad. And we thought it would be a wonderful thing for us to have our citizens be able to get a train and so on. And one of the spots that we uh, kind of promoted is, do you know where the old Cranberry buildings are? Yeah. The old Cranberry buildings? The, the burnt downs. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. building burnt down and the others are there, that old Cranberry thing. There's actually That's an under... Bennies. There's actually an underground parking area in there. You can actually park underneath, under the ground. And it would have made a perfect place because they could have had two levels of parking. And the neat thing is the commuter rail slows down in the, in the summer. And we could have used it for onset parking mm -hmm. and ran a shuttle back and forth. See, and this would have worked out really good. We really, I mean, we thought this would have been a wonderful setup. They could have taken all that down and put up a nice, you know, cleaners and whatever and the tracks, and it would have been wonderful. Of course, it's awful close to Buzzard's Bay Station, which, by the way, is also too small <laughs> for a train station. Uh, but, and it, but it could have been the one that served both, both things, so to speak, and it could have been a nice thing. But, so that was our idea of doing there, and then we thought of maybe another one out by whatever. As far as the Walmart Plaza, which I think you know is sort of a sort of a place that you were talking about, I believe there's going to be some other company going in that building as soon as Walmart leaves. As a matter of fact, I think the discussions are already done on it. So uh, I think that that's going to be they're going to use that parking, and it's not probably going to be suitable for us. But um, I think the Merchants Way or uh, the Merchants Way train station can't be a commuter rail train station. A flyer going through, not a problem. I mean, you know, you're not talking like a huge crowd, uh, especially the way it is. But as far as using it as a train station for commuter rails, and I don't know if you've seen the one in Lakeville where they had to increase that parking several times because, yeah. I mean, they just, it's huge. Parking is a big issue with those things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't think it's really a viable choice. Mr. Holmes, <laughs> um, I appreciate your project. Um, I'll say that. And, and for some ceremonial stops, yeah. it works. Um, Walmart, to me, uh, I had often thought of that. That doesn't work for me very well. The key is not parking. He is overnight parking. Right. The money, the money to be made in the next station is going to be overnight parking. For those people who travel, business travel, Middleborough doesn't do it. You've got to drive, I think it, I looked this up, I think the closest one was Bridgewater or Brockton. And by the time I drive there, I could have driven to right. Logan. So the key is overnight parking. Um, do you have some room downtown there somewhere along the back, down by the feed and in there? No, Maybe no. Um, Mike has some, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But unless you can provide parking, and I don't think your Merchants Way vendors at this point are gonna be very cooperative to do so. anything here. Um, I do respect right. your train station though. And we could do something, it needs to be done because that needs to be preserved that train station and I think you still need uh, to dress it up you still need to have the crosswalk that's not the original train station for the uh, the, one that's, the, no, the one that we're discussing original. is the one that's there now right but it's not the original one that was there the, it was actually taken down by New York New Haven 67, 67. What we're talking right. about is making this yeah. building that the existing building is what I'm talking mm -hmm. about it still can't be let run right. down we still use it for the festivals and little things right but in terms of a real working station, um, you know, we have a lot of money invested in Tremont Nail, and we need to start getting some revenue out of that place. Um, and I think the overnight parking there would be a big bang. I know that you've got ideas mm -hmm. about concerts and right festivals and mm -hmm. things. And I think 
they can all mix. We would have to get some changes made, obviously, as the lady represented the, uh, the professor. Yeah. Uh, that we can't use Tremont Nail as a train station with the existing zoning and bylaws and things, right? So we have to get some things going there once you get back your assessment of if there's any damage there or mm -hmm. uh, impurities to the, to the land, right? So I think that um, overnight parking is the big key. Um, it keeps a lot of people away from using the train mm -hmm. today. Um, and if we were to venture into that, uh, there's a ton of revenue. We worry about revenue. I mean, the one thing we do have is parking here, and we don't capitalize on it even now enough. Mm -hmm. And if we venture into this railroad business, uh, then the big money maker for the town is going to be the parking. Mm -hmm. you know? If I could just uh, comment on a couple of simple things. I, 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 I see the question a little bit differently, not about whether you, you should, whether you, you can support a station or not support a station. It's to what extent you could support a station. So for example, I don't think you're going to have a regional transit stop there. I, I agree with you 100%. But could you support you know, a train that would take 200 commuters, for, for an example? Um, that's, that to me is, is, is more of the question. The, the parking issue, uh, it might, uh, and, and this is one of the reasons why this, it, the, the, the borings that we're doing are really important. Because I asked the consultant to maximize the parking. I, we've come up with two designs. One design said maximize the parking. She was able, she told me the other day, she sent me an email and said, I can get additional 70 spaces back there. How many? 70. 70. 70, seven, yeah. 70. Yeah. 70, seven, seven, yeah. 70. Um, and, and, and I personally went and spoke to TD Bank, Eastern Bank, and Gaff Engineering, who all have parking lots. And I asked them, I said, hypothetically, would you be interested or willing to enter into an agreement with the town to make your lot a public lot? And we could maybe charge some money for the lot and figure out a way to compensate each other. And they were, all three of them were in agreement that they would do something like that, that they'd be willing to explore that idea. And the only reason I say these things is because my job is to turn over all the rocks, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out what the maximum capacity is, what, we, what we're capable of doing, what we're able to do. Whether we choose to do it or not, I think that's the purview of the board. Um, but I don't feel like I would be doing my job if I don't bring you a very thorough proposal that explores all of these ideas. And it's one of the things I've tried to talk to the folks, the public folks about. I think when, when we put an idea on the table, they think that it's already been decided. And it hasn't been already decided. It's an idea. And we need to explore it. And once we explore it, if it doesn't make sense, we don't do it. I, I'd like to think that I'm a bright guy and that I wouldn't try to get ideas to happen that didn't make sense. So I, I appreciate this opportunity to come and chat with you about it because it's really good to hear your views on it. It's another opportunity for me to go back and reassess some of the, some of the concerns you have and the issues and make sure that we're looking at that. So as we look at being in the floodplain, what are the options in a floodplain? What can we do? How would we build a building that would survive a flood back there, right? I mean, I think those are the kinds of questions that we need to look at. So. Uh, I certainly appreciate it, and I'm going to do everything I can to get as much data and information to you so that you all can make an informed decision. Just one point of information. Go the ahead. Tremont station I'm talking about is not the old Tremont Nail. It's back further. It's up beyond Wareham Crossing. Yes. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not the same thing. Yeah. Ah, so there's another option. Yeah. yeah. Also, also the, the uh, just one quick thing. Yeah, we will. Just one quick thing on the train. The, the proposal, I think, from uh, Representative Strauss was really for two trains in the morning, two trains in the afternoon, and they would be like, they aren't bed cars anymore. They're a little different. They're raised units. So there's not a lot of people on the trains. It's not a major stop. It's not a com major commuter train at, at this time. This is Connaughton. Sorry. But you don't control that. <coughs> no, they do. I guess as far as the train station is concerned, uh, Mr. Salvador Pina and I had quite a discussion about it last night because we're not quite on the same page. And he was, I, I'm con I have some concerns about it being downtown. And as he does as well, and we just were debating the issue, which he has explained to you tonight. Um, 
if there was only limited cars coming in, limited people, maybe perhaps downtown is fine. But I think if it's going to be any amount of commuter rail, it is inappropriate and we'll have more problems with parking. I know we have all those supplementary uh, parking areas, but I'm not so sure commuters want to be walking that far. Although, if you look at Lakeville, I guess they really do have to walk quite a distance from their car at this point. Mr. Chairman, and the only reason for that is, is because you can't control it. You can, you can, you can say a train stops here, but well, you can never control how many people are going to show up to ride that train. That's right. And that's what's happened in Middleborough. That's why it's such a long walk, because the parking lot is so huge, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it wasn't always that way, but as soon as you say there's a train stop in here and it's going twice a day to Boston, you can't control who's driving up the road to get on that train. You can limit the number of cars initially, but what are you going to do with all the other people standing there, right? Have they have to increase it. Yep. And that's what's going to happen, especially... If it's overnight parking, um, you, you're going to need a really large as of people from the Cape, people from New Bedford, all up and through, even as far as Dartmouth would drive here, mm -hmm. to get on the train and go to Boston, right, over, and especially with overnight parking. Mm -hmm. You'd have people from all over coming here. Mm -hmm. You can never do that in downtown. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, no. never, I never use the word, I don't like to use the word never, but... Um, it's not, f it's not feasible today, I don't think. Well, we're certainly not at the point where we've had that discussion yet. We, all those other ideas we've heard, and we'll certainly uh, take them into consideration. I'm sure now we'll think a little bit more about the floodplain, I mean, although we've been aware of it. Um, that certainly I think is it's another. A great, it's a great problem to have trying to figure this out because hmm. um, it's, it's going to be an industry built around that, those stops. Tell Use the it. mic. It's really going to be good. Use the mic. I'm saying that it's a good problem to have because there's going to be an industry built around that stop. If, every, if you provide that overnight stuff, there's an industry waiting to happen there. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to put ourselves into such a small shell that once we do it, then we're, we're in trouble and we can't mm -hmm. capitalize on it because somebody six miles away by rail will capitalize on it and we're left standing outside again. Mm -hmm. So I think we want to make sure that whatever we do, we can maximize, right? Mm -hmm. So that's good. good discussion. Yeah, but, I, but I still want to see your doors open and a train stop there. I know <laughs> that's your, I know that's one of your, uh, but we could always use it for things like we do now. Yeah. yeah. Well, right? that it could be a ceremonial stop for the 2014 right. celebration and the birthday of the canal and, you know, the next politician who's running for office can throw rosebuds off the back. I'm sure we can figure that out, it, Mr. Chairman. It's just a project. We'll somewhere down the line, we'll do something. But, you know, it's a, it's a piece that hopefully will get us where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you both very much for coming in. I know it's kind of short. Short notice, but we do appreciate well, well, it. Yeah, well, you're welcome. And, and if I may, just one thing before I leave. Uh, I know uh, Chairman uh, Teitelbaum is not around, and usually I speak with him about signing off on uh, uh, documents that we have. We have an amendment for our uh, for our grant. It's to to transfer some dollars so we can pay the streetscape. So if I could leave that with you and you could sign that for me today, that'd be fantastic. I have something for you also. All right, thank you. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Pino, I'll bring you the Mr. Shabana, hurricane book. I apologize for keeping you late. Discussion. You can come in late tomorrow Mr. morning. Mr. Chairman, could you allow me one second? I just got here a half hour ago from Boston, and I missed citizens' participation. Could I just have one minute under citizens' participation? I just got here from Boston. Go ahead. I rushed down from Boston to get here. I'll allow it, sir. You, you, you don't mind? Well, we're not supposed to do it, but since One you're here minute. and asking Mr. The Holmes, I'd like you to be here, I'll, if you don't mind. I'll allow it. As long okay. As My name is Robert Maxim. I've been a past elected official of the Wayham Housing Authority for 13 years, uh, past elected official for the uh, Onset Fire District Financial Committee for 24 years. So I've had... Uh, many, many years uh, as an elected official in the town of Wayham. And I would just like to come and say tonight that um, I think this has to be said, and, and, I'll, and I'll get out of here in one minute, but I, 
I can prove what I'm going to say in one minute. I've been coming, let me just say this here, that I am accusing you and Mr. Teitelbaum meeting at the YMCA on a certain day, the hour, talking town business. I had physical therapy there for a number of weeks through back surgery. You and Mr. Teitelbaum were in the locker room talking town business on many occasions, throwing Mr. Holmes under the bus in the previous selectmen, Mrs. Winslow. I can back this up. My dates are all certified through my back surgery at the Y, and you and Mr. Teitelbaum meet there on a regular basis when I was having surgery talking about those two members and what's going on in the town and who you really represent behind this board. You represent the cranberry growers. I won't name names and I'm going to leave here very shortly, but I can, all my physical therapies at the Y have been documented and I'd be willing to come back before this board and tell Mr. Holmes exactly what you and Mr. Teitelbaum has said behind his back and behind Mrs. Winslow's back to their face. Anytime, anywhere, any place you like. In the last words, Mr. Teitelbaum told me that his ass was going to be gone and he wouldn't be sitting here again. But he's sitting here, Mr. Holmes, and I'm letting you know to your face I can back it up. And I'm leaving here, but I just wanted to let you know that you and Mr. Teitelbaum shouldn't be meeting at the Y every week on a Tuesday or a Thursday. What's going on with town business? Anybody got any questions before I leave? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I can back it up. Mr. Shabano. I'm going to I get to go call my mother because she's called me about six times tonight. Fun day. I'll try and follow that if I can. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm here before the selectmen on a matter that um, pretty much when uh, Mr. Slavin was on the planning board brought this to my attention probably the first day. <laughs> a quorum. And, uh, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, unfortunately, with two selectmen gone, we don't have a quorum. We don't have a quorum right now. We have minute. to take a break. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Usually, it takes it takes me a little longer to do that. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yeah, White, uh, quorum now. I'm sorry, I couldn't wait. <laughs> Is it okay? I'm sorry, proceed? I apologize. No, no need to apologize. <laughs> um, I'm before you tonight to um, at last discuss something that uh, Mr. Slavin, when he was a member of the planning board, um, brought to my attention. I remember him delivering a uh, 
manila envelope or a file folder of information pretty much one of my first days on the job about the need to um, update the town's master plan, which I believe was done in 1998. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So it's approximately 15 years old, which isn't ancient compared to some towns, but certainly out of date. Um, and I appreciate the current Board of Selectmen uh, taking up this issue. Um, previous requests to have this addressed um, haven't really gone anywhere. Um, so we're a feisty bunch. <laughs> Previously, I think it was several months ago, I, um, I put out a question on the planner's listserv uh, requesting information on the composition of other towns' master plan committees mm -hmm. for inf informational purposes. Um, l reviewing those and concerning the composition and the nature of boards in this town, um, the memo you have in front of you is simply um, a suggestion as far as a potential composition of a master plan committee. Um, when I was in the selectman's office yesterday, I happened to hand a copy to um, Mr. Slavin and um, Ms. Whiteside, and I, 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 I heard you, Alan, uh, make the comment, you know, and I did the math where my suggested composition would be an even number of 12, so it might be natural to increase, uh, put an additional member to make it an odd number. Um, but this is simply a recommendation. Obviously, the Board of Selectmen, um, your board has the, has the authority to establish a committee um, with a composition of your choosing. Um, and also, I attached uh, the town of Easton, in responding to my query, um, attached a, almost a mission statement or a charge for their master plan steering committee. And certainly, you know, word for word, things would need to be changed, but I think it's a good idea um, because having acted on committees in the past and provided technical staffing to committees. Sometimes um, a committee, it, the mission isn't always clear as far as what the goal of that committee is. So what I was hoping for tonight is um, the Board of Selectmen to um, potentially approve um, a composition of the Master Plan Committee and authorize myself to take the composition of the committee, use this template charge or template mission statement and develop something that would be applicable to the town of Wareham and then come back at a future meeting uh, for, the, for the Board of Selectmen to give their blessing or approval to the composition of the committee as well as the mission of a, a master plan update committee. Um, this would not be as obviously as long term or involved as writing a master plan from scratch. Um, you know, I don't believe in reinventing the wheel for the sake of doing it. Um, it would be taking what we already have and updating the information and making some changes to it as necessary. And the idea of having a comprehensive committee like this of potentially 12, 13 members is to potentially break up that committee into subcommittees to address individual facets of the plan, such as traffic, transportation, open space, recreation, economic development, and um, it would allow the process to move forward uh, more quickly that way. Questions from the board? Uh, no, I don't ever really have a question. I mean, these master plans have to be updated, and the longer you go, the longer you don't have what you need in the plan, I mean. <laughs> and the more outdated the information <laughs> the more, becomes. Exactly, and uh, so I have no problem with okay. this at all. I mean, it's, it's probably time. And what, could be, what could be presently potentially a six to eight month process if you wait five more years could be a year or a year right. and a half. So. Yeah, and you know, I always say it's, it's what you don't know you don't know that matters, exactly. you know? And uh, this is, we could have something we don't know. <laughs> I'm so. sure. Yeah, and um, which we probably do. <laughs> I know. I know one major issues in not just this town, but a lot of towns is um, you prepare a comprehensive document, and then it collects dust on a shelf somewhere. By updating this on a, as time in a ti as timely a manner as possible, while it's still fairly current, fifteen years is not ancient. Like I said, um, it allows it to keep keep it keep the public aware of it, and certainly. Um, you know, when reviewing applications that come through the office allows, allows myself and the rest of the, 
uh, department staff to reference it when we're processing applications. Thank you. We weren't meeting illegally in the selectman's office. I just want to make that no, clear. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> We did talk about making this an uneven number, and I'm, I'm looking at the list, and I'm... No, I'm trying, to, no, what I'm trying to do is get, um, it, um, I'm guessing, I, I guess I would ask, uh, why the Board of Health would not be involved in here, or possibly um, a representative from the Water Pollution Control Facility. You have other things pretty well covered, mm -hmm. and certainly um, that's, but that that's, could yeah. that could be one of the that could be one of the additional people Absolutely. on top of the three. The, I think this is a great idea. The, the, the time has come yep. and the time has gone, um, and and we do need to do this. And I'm glad that my compatriots. Are and certainly that's, you, you bring up two potential additions to the committee that I think make a lot of sense. I think those are good ideas. Um, you know, that, that, you know the, the, the number of members on these committees varies greatly from mm -hmm. town to town. Um, the composition of the committees, there was one town that I saw where they had no board members, no town staff mm -hmm. involved in the committee. It was yeah. simply all residents. Um, the, you know, depending on the various departments that exist in towns, or the very, some, some towns have more committees than other towns, different kinds of committees. So certainly I think, I think those are two good suggestions, um, either or, both, one or both, the uh, Board of Health and or um, wastewater. Certainly I, I, I don't see any issues with those. I think that, that would, that's a good idea. The, the, those are just suggestions that I'm throwing out. I'm entirely in favor of mm -hmm. proceeding with this. What was that look for? Mr. Holmes? Board of Health and Wastewater Management? Only, Water because, control facility. only because one is regulatory and one is big bucks. And uh, yeah, I, I would agree with both of those. I think those are good additions. That still leaves you with having to add one more. Well, um, if we the, go with the well, uneven right number. now, the way it's listed on the memo is 12. If you add those two, it's 14. The possibility exists of adding a fourth at-large resident to bring it to an odd number. Potentially, somebody's going to be the chairman. Correct. And if somebody's going to be the chairman of the committee and chair the committee and we use Robert's rules of order, they only vote in the case of a tiebreaker anyway. Correct. Mm -hmm. So there's no issue as far as having an even number. Okay. Okay. And you know what? The I, I believe that the mission of this committee, um, there there may not be official votes necessary. If you break off into subcommittees and bring together a document, mm -hmm. it's to prepare. It's to update the present document to bring it forward to town meeting. So it's really town mm -hmm. meeting that will be voting to adopt the finished product anyway. <laughs> They're going to need a meeting. <laughs> yeah, but we, ha we have to go to the wine first before we can decide that. Uh, if it's okay with Steve, the board. I noticed those tire marks on your back. No, I'm just kidding. Both sides. <laughs> if, it's, if it's okay with the board, uh, we probably should just vote to go ahead and approve the makeup of this committee because so we moved. have to form the committee. With, with the additions? With, that, the, with the two, two additions, additions as listed. So moved. Second. Aye. Any discussion? No. None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All uh, opposed? Before you move, what's the uh, target? Did, did I miss the target date? Well, right now, I think because it's an update of an existing master plan, I think the hope would be to bring it forward in the, in the fall of 2014. I think that's a reasonable timeline mm -hmm. at town meeting. Wow. 
Um, and what I would do subsequent to this, Steve, a lot of work or a short time. It's a huge amount of work. I would say maybe the fall of 2014. And that's possible. You want to use the budget items in the spring and. Okay. No, that's right. And that's possible. Yeah. And that's tight. Potentially, that's a lot of work in a short time. So they'll be under the gun. Yeah. And I would say at the earliest fall, but basically put them in for two years or or a three-year period, and if they finish early, they finish earlier. No, 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 no. I. Mr. Slavin, may I? Go ahead. <laughs> this young man is a go-getter. I don't think there's a patient person sitting at this table, although you're going to have to discuss that with Peter to find out whether you are or not. Um, uh, I know. I, I, the target date should be 2014. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, the, the fall town meeting. If you run into huge difficulties, then I think you, it's incumbent for you to come back and say, whoa, you know. Well, I but I don't, it, you know, we create boards and committees, and some of them have never met, ever. <laughs> okay, so, um, and some of them may meet, but they don't keep any minutes. Correct. Um, so I, I think it's incumbent upon you and us to move things forward as well and as um, quickly as we can. Right, and that's we're, why. We're, and I think you, that's, that's where I was going, and I think a minimum quarterly report here. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Here, you don't need all these people to come. The chairman yeah, or designee can come or you, with you, the chairman and you. And sit here every quarter and tell us where you're at, any roadblocks, blah blah blah. Anything we can, anything we can do to help should be given to us on a regular basis, not at the quarterly meeting, but every quarter we should have an update, uh, so that you don't miss the target. And what and what can happen? There has to be a target. Right. This, oh, definitely. You know. Um, and I think 2014 is a good target. And, and if if you'd prefer it to be at the fall town meeting, then that's yeah. certainly then that's certainly really reasonable to me. And the, the other advantage is, you know, in between meetings of this committee, you know, there are department heads and other staff w that can help this committee get information such as Dave Pichette and, you know, Bob Ethier, the Board of Health Director, and um, the Harbor Master, you know, and Sal Pena. You know, we can, we can um, tap into those resources to help this process move forward and, um, you know, that's why, Steve, I was saying the mission statement that was sent to me by Easton, I would like to take this approved composition, plug it into the mission statement of Easton and come back to this board here in the next month or so and say, here's, here's the mission statement and get your blessing on that, too. Fine. Okay. All right. I just put out a note out to the public. We're going to need three at-large members. Hopefully people applying will have some under the merit principle, some skills in basically this type of area uh, and we need three people to apply ASAP okay uh, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll get this out to the local different boards and committees and we'll have to reach out to Onset Water District since it's a separate government entity excellent thank you okay thank you thank you very much thank you we have Next on our list, uh, assignment of policies. We have no assignment of policies tonight, sir. No, what it is is we need to as assign the, the policies that we haven't done in a long time. We started and never there's did nothing it. nothing in the folder. No, there's nothing in there. Everybody has the policy book. So I would ask for the next meeting when Peter is back that we basically pick, f everybody pick three or four, make sure that we won't duplicate unless we get started because we're way, way behind on this. We started a year ago. And we basically get sidetracked for different reasons. Following that, I think maybe we ought to, because I think we need to talk about the audit once a month. Yes. I think we need to talk about boards and commissions once a month. I think we need to talk about whatever it is that we're talking about once a month. That, that we have, you know, the first Tuesday of the month we get, we talk, we make sure that, that the audit is on the agenda. And then the second Tuesday that, we, that is always on the agenda, the bylaws, for instance, okay? Or, and then the third, there's always that on the agenda, kind of like what we've been doing. But 
it needs to keep coming back. But I would I would have you pick or have the chairman pick specific Tuesdays. to do it. Would you like to go ahead and, and do an outline so at the meeting on the 9th we can talk about it? We, I think we've given you the suggestions of who you would meet up. We just might. Your next lawsuit would be you can just tell us what weeks you think it should happen. Bring it back to us. Oh, you know, bring the agenda back to us. Do you have the ideas, right? You know what we're requesting? So the chairman sets the agenda, you know, he can pick whatever weeks he wants, but all these things need to be on there. This is why I said if you give me a list of the items you have, Certainly, you have a chance. I'd be happy to do that, and I will send it to you via email. Thank you. And I will also include all of the rest of the board members so that they are yes. aware of what I'm suggesting. Any other town business not anticipated 40 hours? I have nothing. Anybody have, have nothing. anything? Motion to adjourn. Town no town administrator's is. report. Does anybody have any reports from any committees? Nope. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.